recording the um, guitar solo and luau. I just remember John had uh, his amp on the, um, the console. It's like one take and I've never seen anybody play guitar like that. And it was, it was the real fucking deal. Like he was just putting 110% into this fucking solo. It's just essentially just noise. But he was playing it like such an artist. I mean, seriously, I was thinking that as it was going on, how fucking lucky am I that I'm sitting here getting to watch this? Everyone's gonna hear this thing and they're just gonna hear noise and just like squeaks and you know chirps and stuff like that. But I got to watch this guy make that and it was like amazing. It was, yeah, that's, that's probably my most favorite recording experience ever. And that's like early on. I'm Mark Trombino and we're at Donut Friend. For the longest time I'd been talking about opening a donut shop and you know I just did that forever and then but you know when when I came to this fork in the road this realization that I had to do something um, I was like well fuck why not yeah the idea was to, to slice donuts in half and and treat it like a sandwich and put everything inside to kind of bring a little music into the, into the donuts like has was been pretty important to me um, it also gave donut friend more of an identity like out of the gate which was kind of nice what I really wanted was obscure band names that no one would understand. And for the most part, I think, you know, probably a lot of people don't get it, but that was, I wanted everybody just to be like, just to say, I'll have a Fudge Gazi and have no idea who Fugazi is. In high school, I was like doing the shitty punk band thing, you know, and then it kind of morphed. I went to college in San Diego um, and I still like was in that same band from high school. I started having more and more friends in San Diego. So I ended up staying in San Diego more often hooking up with some other people to start another band called Night Solo Man. You know, I remember I remember that one started just like hanging outside of a club in San Diego because uh, none of us could get in to go see Sonic Youth. Um, and so we were just talking and they're like, ah, we've got a band and we need a drummer. And you know, you guys seem cool. So I started playing with them. The bass player from that band and I uh, went on to be in Drive Like Jehu. Slint Spiderland was like my seminal, I want to make records record, and I want records to sound like that. When I heard that record, I was just like, holy shit, real drums. That Those drums sound real. It was the first time it really hit me that you could make records that sounded natural and, and real. I think it was the experience of being recorded by other people. You know, I didn't feel like anybody understood what kind of sound I wanted. I always felt like as the drummer, you know, sort of like sidelined by the engineer or producer or whatever. Um, and that never sat well with me. But Yank Rum was the first time where I was the one behind the board, kind of doing everything. And it was pretty terrifying um, because it was, you know, it was like our second record and, you know, I didn't know, I didn't know what I was doing. I'd never been on a API console. I'd never used a 24 track machine. I'd, you know, like none of this stuff, it was all new to me and I just sort of faked it. It gave me the experience of working in a studio like that. And then I was able to take that experience and start inviting other bands to come work with me in that same studio. I do feel like it's sort of like the bed of a, any recording are the drums. Um, so I spend a good chunk of time searching for drum sounds. You know, have faith in yourself that if you just keep moving forward, you will eventually get there. That's how I approached everything my whole life. It's just like, I, I know what I want to do, I don't know how to get there, but I'm just gonna start walking. <laughs>